Hey friends, so I've been playing a bit more with the view transitions component that is coming to React pretty soon. It's still un unstable, so um, yeah, don't use this in production, I guess, but we have experimental support for for it on um, on Next.js 15.2. So I've just just been playing with this and seeing what kind of what kind of things we can do with it and how the API looks like and so on. Um, so the first thing that I tried to do is I I tried to recreate this demos that Bramos put together for the Chrome developer side where he has these couple demos that I think they're very interesting because they show some of the the flexibility that they have and how how we can um, sort of exercise this API pretty well. And in this demo, what we have is we have these cards that, first of all, they have a custom entry and exit animation. So you'll see that when they enter the stage, they, they drop in from above and they have this fading animation. And when they leave the page, they do the opposite. They, they fade out and they move up. Um, and the other thing that we have here is that we have this um, sort of this custom easing function that uh, moves the, the cards to the same, to the correct place or to the updated positions with this bouncy effect. That is uh, something that is like a shared animation across across all of these different elements. So that's one of the, I guess, newest features of the view transition API, which is that we can share uh, the, same, the same transition and the same animation across all elements of the same class. Um, so the way that we do that with React, let me just jump to the code, is that first of all, we have to wrap our carts in a view transition. This is the unstable view transition component, which we uh, import from, from React. And the one of the key differences between using this component and um, and using like the native uh, the native browser API is that when we use the view transition component from React, we don't have to manually call the start view transition function because React under the hood, it figure, figures out when it should call it. And it also figures out when it should add the uh, the classes or the names to this view to these elements when we transition. So uh, we can add a name, let's say name car i. Let's say it has to be a unique name for for each class. In this case, I don't need it because I'm using the class to target the animations. But if we want them to have unique unique IDs, we can. But this doesn't mean that this always is going to have a view transition name. Uh, React would only add that name if this element is going to be updated, uh, is going to move around the page. So it uses some heuristics uh, that are documented on on the PR. So uh, let's see. So here are all the sort of the all the conditions uh, when a view transition elements activate. But what this means is that we don't have to worry about the uh, calling this function, which is nice because it sort of detaches the the element that caused the transition from the, the transition itself. So one thing that we have here is that also this only is going to work when you have an asynchronous update. So things like start tar transition, use defer value, actions, and suspense revealing from fallback to content. These are the things that trigger a view transition, which means that if I use here like a regular state, so in this case I have... Uh, what is my use state? Um, if I, instead of using the deferred value, I just use the card here. Let me just update this. I'm just going to use the regular cards piece of state. And this will still work, but it's not going to animate. It's not going to have any transitions because um, this is not going to, a regular state update doesn't trigger transitions. So for this, I have to use one of those options that uh, were defined. In the PR, in this case, I'm using the use defer value. So instead of using the cards value directly, I'm using the defer cards value. Uh, and this way, it sort of animates. And you might have also seen that part of the API of the component is that I can pass a class name, which is what gets added uh, with the view transition. It gets, this gets translated to view transition class in the in the CSS, and this gets added in conditionally when the uh, the component is either entering the page or exiting the page. There are also a couple of others. There is um, there is a sh uh, share, 
which is, uh, I'm not entirely sure when that happens. And there is a layout one uh, that you can read more here about when these class names or these transition classes will be applied uh, to the element. But in this case, for this example, these two enter and exit are enough. And then the way that I target those with the CSS is simply, uh, what is it? Here I have my view transition group for my cards, uh, which is the one that applies to all of the cards. And this is the one that applies only for the cards that are animated in and the ones that are animating out, right? So these are only gonna be applied to the elements when they enter or exit the uh, the page, I guess. So uh, that's one of the demos. And the other demo that I recreated was <clears throat> this pagination demo that uh, Bramos also created here on the Chrome site. And this one um, illustrates the using the types transition types that we can that we can pass. In this case, uh, what what he's doing here is that when we move uh, back or forward, we establish the direction and then we set that as the type. So then in the CSS, we can say that for the type forward, we're gonna apply these transitions, right? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have access to the to the type. We can't define, since we don't control when we call the star view transition method, because React calls that under the hood, um, we don't have access to set the type of the transition here, but we can do this with um, we can still do this with transition classes, right? So what we're trying to accomplish here is that when I move to a page that is forward, then the old element is going to move to the left, and the next one is going to come up, come from the right, right? This is the forward animation that we want, uh, sort of like a slight left animation, and then. When we move back, we want the opposite, right? We want we want the previous element to move to the right and the new one to come in from the left. So um, yeah, that's exactly what, uh, what we're trying to, to achieve here. And the way that I did that here, instead of using the type, because we don't have access to the type, is that I'm just defining another class name. So if you can see my view transition component, I'm passing the page class, always, always have passing this page class, but I'm also passing this animation class, which is gonna be either forward or backwards, depending on the um, whether the page that I'm moving to is uh, higher than the page that I'm currently at. And on the CSS, we target that with class names. Um, so this is my page class, which is applied to, to all of the pages. And these are my two animations from the old and the new cards that are showing up in the forward case and the old and the new one in the backward case. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. It's uh, it's very similar to using types, except that we have to rely on classes here. Again, React handles this. It will add the classes automatically when necessary. And it will also add the names when necessary. It will generate names automatically. In this case, I'm not defining any names. So uh, if we inspect here, we'll pause here. Um, you see that is transitioning, and this is uh, my group that I have here. This is the old and the new page. The, the new one is coming from the right. That's why it's not on the page. But it generated this uh, DJRL7 ID. Uh, but I can also, of course, apply, give it a name. It says name page, and it will use that instead. So let me do that again. Let's see that. that the name is now page as I defined it. Another thing that it's interesting, which I believe I mentioned probably, is that the transitions are not always defined. They are defined on the fly. Uh, if I inspect this element, you'll see you'll never find uh, what is my page wrapper. I guess it's this component right here. But there is no indication of a view transition name in the CSS here for this element, right? There's 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 nothing around this. There's no even a, uh, there's no fragment or anything around this element at this point, and that's because React will create that on the fly right before it's starting the transition, which is which is good because otherwise we might end up with uh, elements on the page that are transitioning even though we don't want them to participate in the animation. Uh, so React will figure out that those should not have a, a transition name and it won't apply one uh, 
uh, for those, which is nice. We'll have a, a performance boost by having as few elements transition on the page as possible at the same time. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to show. I have this demo, which is a, a fancier version of everything that I've shown. Uh, I have, um, this is, this has a few, a few things coming and the, I guess a unique thing about this is that here, what's triggering the animation is the navigation, like the, the, uh, Next.js router, when I navigate from one page to the, to the next, that's what's triggering the, the, uh, star view transition call and causing all of these animations to happen. Uh, but the implementation is very simple and I can share, I can do another demo to show how this, all of these animations, uh, work. One thing that we don't have yet is the ability to sort of move back and, or to sort of to animate when we move back and forward using the browser, the, um, sort of the browser buttons. This might be on purpose. I'm not sure, but it would be nice to have a way to at least opt into these animations or some of them when we navigate with this, uh, back and forward buttons. So anyway, that was a way longer video that I was hoping to do. But uh, I'm writing a blog post with some of my learnings from, from this and documenting what I learned with the, this new component API. So yeah, check it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching.